I'm Barbie the Welder, and this is How to Weld a Flower. For this project, you're going to need a piece of 18 gauge steel, a way to mark it, and I'm using the cap for one of my gas bottles to mark a circle. I'm using some roller chain here, a piece of quarter inch round bar for the stem, and you're going to need a way to cut your material, whether it's with a pair of tin snips, a cutoff wheel, or a plasma cutter. You're also going to need a way to clean your material. I'm using a wire brush here and a way to deburr any sharp edges. Also, while you're working, make sure you're wearing all your safety gear. You want to start with clean material, so if your material isn't clean, go ahead and clean it up now. Next, trace and cut out two circles from your material. I'm using my Miller Spectrum 375 Extreme to get this cut out. Next, clean and deburr any of your edges. I'm using my CP875 to deburr mine. Mark and cut out 24 to 28 sunflower petals. Clean them up. Next, take one of your circles and using the top of your tank, go ahead and slowly and carefully bend it. You just want a gentle curve in it. I'm just going to move it just a little bit and bend it, move it a little bit and bend it until you get yourself a soft little dome. Set your domed piece aside and now you're going to want to separate your petals into longer and shorter pieces and you're going to start laying them out. It's going to be the back of the flower, so we're going to start with the longer pieces and we're just going to lay them out. Once you have them laid out where you want, you're going to put two tack welds on each one, connecting them to the back of the flower. For this project, I'll be MIG welding using my Millermatic 211. I'm using an 030 ER70S6 wire. I've got my auto set at 6, the machine set at MIG Steel C25, and my wire speed at 70. Clean up your tack welds with the wire brush, and then go ahead and lay in your second layer of petals and you want to split put one in the center of each of the previous ones once you have them laid out you're going to tack weld them on the same way you did the first ones but this time you're going to hold the petal up at the back of it and then just place the two tack welds on here Clean up your welds with the wire brush, and then we're going to take our little domed piece, lay it on top, and we're going to want to tack weld it in at least probably six different places, just to make sure it's tack welded on really good, because we're going to add a lot of heat to this center piece, and it's going to want to pull up from here, so if it's not tack welded on good, it's going to pop right back off. Now we're going to create the texture in the center of the sunflower and we're going to do that simply by placing tack welds all over the whole thing. Because this is thinner material, you have to be really careful with your heat and make sure that you give an area a chance to cool off so you can work over here and then come over here. But you just really want to make sure that you're not blowing holes through this. So take your time and let it cool off. Now 
So if you saw on the time lapse, you paid attention real close, I blew three holes through this almost immediately. So the way to combat that is I pulled my torch head up a little bit farther. I put a bigger gap between the tip of the torch and the flower, which allowed it to cool off a little bit before it hit. And so I just slowly went back and forth until I was able to fill those holes back in. If you blow holes through it and you can't fix it, leave it. It's organic, it's a flower, you know, have fun with it. Don't, uh, don't be too difficult on yourself for it. Next, take a chisel and lightly chip off any of the weld spatter you have on your puddles. Next, take your puddles and just bend them back and forth and give them a little twist to give it more of an organic shape. Next, I'm going to take a 15 inch length of quarter inch round bar and I'm going to tack it onto the back. I'm going to put two tack welds on either side. Next, we're going to create these two leaves down here. Leaves? Leaves? We're going to create these two, whatever these are down here. And just going to take them and we're going to curl the two sides in. Like this. Kind of give that a little fold. We're not going to break it. Kind of put it in here. Once you get that end folded like that, I'll take it and tack weld it in the center nice and solid. And then you can fold each of these sides over so that it fits flush against the stem. Clean your welds up with a wire brush. You can stop right here if you want, stick this in the ground and call it a day. It makes really pretty garden art. But if you want it to be something that you display inside, hold on and we are gonna make a flower pot for it. I'm gonna use this old chain to create a flower pot. But the problem with working with chain is it's usually got oil baked right into it and you'll never get it all out. You can get close, but when you weld it, it's going to set on fire. Kind of fun. Don't tell people I said that. Take a wire, wire brush and simply clean it up using the wire brush. You can get a lot of it off with a shop, shop rag, but I find that this works uh, pretty quickly. We're now going to take the chain and create a V-shaped vase by taking, cutting these, and then stacking them up in layers and welding it all together. If you're lucky and you have a chain break, this is the part that you can skip. But if you're like me and you don't have a chain break, this is how you cut chain apart. This is how I cut chain apart. This is a low piece. You wanna make sure that you're gonna connect it to a high piece. It blends it together good. I know this is a piece I wanna cut. I take it like this. I'm going to take my sanding disc and I'm going to grind this top down all the way to the top of this chain. Once I get it down there, I'm going to use one of the bazillion holes I have in my bench. I'm going to center this pin over that hole and I'm going to take this punch and I'm going to hammer that down to break it loose. And then I'm going to use my second punch to push that pin all the way out. For your next layer, you're just going to do one link longer and do that for four or five layers until you get your flower face the height you want. Next, we're going to weld our chain into a circle. Shape it. I use my punch to hold those pieces together. I'm going to shape it into a circle. And then you're going to put a tack of MIG weld. You're going to weld in between each link, and it's going to hold that in the shape Go through and weld all your pieces into circles. These five rings are going to be stacked up from small to large to make your vase. 
So take your third largest piece. And we're going to need a way to connect the flower into the vase. Take your third largest piece and take your piece of 18 gauge and trace around the inside. Once you got the inside traced, take your marker and go a little bit wider. So we don't want it to come out past that ring. So we're going to trace around the outside like this. And we're going to cut that out, clean it up, and weld it to the bottom of your third ring. Every shop has a pile of nuts and bolts sitting around that are rusty and no one knows what the heck they're for. But I went digging through mine and I found two nuts that fit over the base of the flower. And I'm going to take them, I'm going to weld them together and weld them in the center of this circle that I just created. This is going to give me a spot to put the flower once I get it all welded up. Next, take your piece and weld it to the bottom of the third ring. Now take your rings and you're going to weld them together from small too large and I like to place the tack welds on the inside to keep it nice and clean looking on the outside. Just so want to center them and tack weld them up. Oh, I put four, four tack welds, one on each side. To finish up your flower, just pop it down in the nuts there, give it a couple of tack welds, and you can leave it like that if you want. For me, I want to make it look like dirt, so I'm just going to take shop scrapings. These are little pieces of steel that I've got laying around the shop. I'm going to pour them in there for some filler and pour in some rust, rusty nuts and bolts. And that'll give it, make it look like it's got dirt in there. I'm in the process of creating exclusive metal art classes. Head over to my website and sign up today to be the first to know what's going on.